Welcome to Rockstock Channel. It is Saturday, July 10th. We're going to run through quickly my EV SPAC scoreboard, as well as nickel, graphite, and lithium. I'm going to focus mostly on lithium, but uh, I had the privilege on the SPAC uh, front uh, of participating at the New York Stock Exchange with Alusa and Frere, which are consummated a merger, which was announced in January. They, uh, Frere is a, is a battery company I've spoken about uh, into the capital raise or the pipe transaction was Glencore uh, for cobalt and nickel and other you know raw materials, as well as Coke Strategic Platforms, a major, one of the biggest companies in the world and, and in America. And uh, Frere is using Nordic cheap electricity and, uh, and, 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 and good management capabilities to commercialize uh, technology from MIT 24M, which uh, has been incubated over the past uh, 10 years. It's also being commercialized by Kyocera in Japan, uh, another company in Thailand. And uh, this semi-solid technology uh, ha uh, proposes to, or, or has, significantly reduced steps, which will enable you know, lower cost for um, the production of batteries. So Frere has very ambitious targets to move aggressively, uh, similar to Northvolt in Sweden. Uh, those who like Northvolt or are interested in Northvolt, you can't really invest in that because it's a private company. But as a Nordic battery play, uh, in as much as there's a raw material shortage we see, uh, Elon Musk and others are, are talking about the, the biggest limiting factor constraint is cell supply. So here's a clean green Frere battery. Uh, they have no revenue, like many SPACs. Uh, they have a business plan. They've raised a lot of capital behind it with very strong partners. The stock has not performed um, well. It's trading below its $10 uh, issue price. Nevertheless, uh, Frere has raised um, and we'll have in the bank something like $670 million to execute on their plan, which is to start toward the process of 43 gigawatt hours by putting Gigaplant 1 and 2 in place after building a qualification plan. So anyway, we'll be following that story closely. Frere is an RK equity client, so just bear that in mind. Most of the clients or companies that we talk about we're either advisors to or investors in, uh, but we just want to share with you, you know, why why we like these companies. I'm showing uh, the SPAC scoreboard here in general. If you look at the one month performance, it's not been too bad across the board, and also you know three months um, year to date, not great. There's a lot of red here, so the SPAC market had a lot of froth in Q1 and Q2. Some of it kind of pulled back, but uh, this is a ranking of SPACs by price. Uh, MP Materials, which I wrote about for the first time as a last year, July, um, after Nikola, I guess, and a few others became public, uh, my attention to the SPAC market increased significantly. I call this, you know, premature e-speculation. I did invest. Uh, we're not advisors to MP, but I did invest, and I, I know the company re reasonably well. Interesting to see it's um, at the top. There's a number of SPACs here that are still in process, but we keep track of these on a... Um, on a monthly basis and uh, from time to time we'll, we'll be we'll be talking about these i'm going to switch now to the nickel scoreboard and i'm going to go through both nickel and graphite fairly quickly um the nickel market uh, again if you look at this is a bit of a mixed bag it was mostly down there are a few names that were up here but the flat to down i guess in the month Talon metals which is a, a client and investment of ours uh had a great uh, Q1, um, the stock was as high as 88 cents. They've also had fantastic drill results. Uh, and nevertheless, the stock has, has kind of sold off. And despite the fact that the nickel price has recovered from the last quarter when there was a, a spook about, you know, Ching Shan, one thing I, I'm not, you know, I've noticed that uh, Tesla and Elon Musk has not so much been talking about, you know, nickel or any other raw materials. He's been talking about Dogecoin and Bitcoin and the, the, the the, the second quarter has has generally had kind of you know Tesla stock I guess has been down you know year to date and some of these uh, mined commodities are uh, very correlated to that but um, in, in any event I, I, I as in lithium we we, we published a, a video called you know lithium higher love I think the same thing will apply to a number of these nickel names. Uh, it, that is companies, they hit highs, then they retrace 30 to 50% before hitting higher highs. 
when I look at Talon Metals, I'm looking at a 287 million market cap. You go back to the SPAC scoreboard and you look at these companies trading at billions or multiple billions for um, what I consider to, in many ways more risky investment propositions uh, and less scarce opportunities uh, compared to you know a high grade nickel sulfide in in America. I think Talon has the potential to be like a nickel Piedmont in that or a nickel um, MP materials, uh, a, a scarce hard rock critical mineral in the United States. I'm only talking about Talon because it's my only investment in nickel um, and it's the only company that we advise in nickel. There are plenty of other companies listed here, some of which uh, you know, may be very interesting stories, but just not as deeply um, you know, in the weeds of, of, of these stories as we are in the lithium space, familiar with uh, you know, almost all of the, the lithium names. So I'm going to move quickly as well to graphite, where there's a similar dynamic uh, from our perspective in that we we know and and talk about uh, and are invested in advisors to Nouveau Monde Graphite, which has taken a major hit in the second quarter, uh, despite the fact that they took um, a major uh, step in fully listing in the United States. So Bottom line, Nouveau Monde raised about $55 million, led by Evercore. Roth Capital Markets uh, published the first coverage of Nouveau Monde with an $11 US uh, stock price. So Nouveau Monde, I view uh, similarly to uh, a vertically integrated lithium hydroxide story. You know, they have a mine, a flake graphite mine, uh, but they plan to make the value added coated spherical graphite downstream. But you have to qualify, they're building a phase one plant to qualify with customers. Overall, the, you know, the capex should be 750, you know, 800 million dollars, but the uh, the EBITDA um, should be similar to what a lithium hydroxide producer like Piedmont should achieve in time. So you look at the valuations again, 353 million dollars U.S. listed stock uh, compared to you know a billion or multiple billion in the case of lithium and and of the EV specs. So. I think there is a potential there for higher highs uh, at Nouveau Monde. Um, a number of the other stocks in the sector didn't do so well. Next source, this is McDavis's company, Talga. Um, Talga actually signed a an MOU with with Frere, uh, but it ha hasn't so much you know impacted the stock. But there are a few names here: Gratomic, you know, Tiraputi Graphite. Uh, a lot of people uh, talk to me about that, you know, on Twitter as a, a producing. Um, uh, graphite mine in, in Madagascar and in India. Moving on to lithium, I'm going to uh, actually focus first on uh, a lithium bull I wrote uh, this week called America the Biden Full Lithium Independence Day, uh, talking about the 100 day supply chain review. I've written frequently about the geopolitics of lithium, you know, us and them, uh, meaning the US, you know, and China or China and the rest of the world. I'm now focused a little bit on us versus them, which is, uh, you know, in the United States politics of lithium, you have uh, EV advocacy, but you also have anti-mining sentiment, which uh, is playing out a bit. The drama in Nevada, comma, water, indigenous people, fish, wildlife, flowers. These are things that we're used to hearing about in Chile, uh, but they're playing themselves out. You have the first Native American you know, cabinet secretary who's Deb Holland, she's very focused on, on issues of this type. Um, and in Nevada, Ioneer and Lithium Americas are on land that she oversees. You know, Jennifer Granholm, I call this a star spangled banter. You know, Granholm the Brave, uh, you know, while she was in Nevada, you know, she was doing a little bit of California dreaming. She she met with energy justice groups, um, this progressive leadership alliance of Nevada. And basically says, you know, lithium for EVs needs to be mined in a responsible way that respects environment and Native American tribes. This is what she says in in Nevada. She doesn't say we need to invest in lithium in Nevada. She says it needs to be responsible and you know focused on the environment. And then while she's in Nevada, she talked up California Salt and Sea as utterly sustainable and very exciting. So that shows, I mean, I think we, I believe uh, the DOE has funded a lot of geothermal projects historically, and I think there is a natural proclivity for geothermal. Um, and uh, I'm going to focus on DLE opportunities in uh, subsequent discourse, but uh, it is notable that, you know, GM writing a small check into uh, controlled thermal, a private company. I question the seriousness of that overall. And likewise, you know, Stellantis, you know, talked about MOUs, but they didn't press release them. We are believers in DLE for sure. We believe that they can contribute the supply 
post 2025 uh, and maybe later in, into the 2027 eight you know period of time there are a few other DLE opportunities i think that are more advanced which we will talk about you know in, in the near future but it's interesting to see uh the paranoia from gm and stellantis you know they're investing in lithium they're focused on lithium they're not investing elsewhere and similarly um tesla has talked a lot and made investments in you know lithium uh i'll talk about the clay patent uh you know a, a, another time but uh in digesting um the biden white house's 250 page you know supply chain review document there was a lot of talk about canada america I talked about this in one of the videos I did, you know, Quebec Spodgeman Rock. So I'd encourage you to kind of look at that. But in general, I think that the United States um, will want mining selectively, but if other countries could mine for America and then America could process here, they'd be happy to do that. And I think uh, Canada is very happy to mine and process, but the US I think will be importing, you know, a fair bit of Canadian spodumene. Um, and uh, you know it could very well be processed by Piedmont Lithium, although Piedmont is also planning to um, convert in uh, alongside Cyana, you know, in Quebec. So I, I, this hard rock to hydroxide story, going back to this lithium bull I'm writing, I'm revisiting the three American uh, projects I wrote about three years ago. Piedmont has been an absolute rock star of a stock, um, but they are broadly diversifying uh, with partnerships now with Iron Ridge in Ghana, as well as Sayana in Quebec. Uh, using my rock uh, analogies, I see Jungle Land and Thunder Road are, are two great songs on the Born to Run album. Uh, Jungle Land is uh, Ghana and uh, Thunder Road, you know, one last chance to make it real. The uh, North American lithium asset has had a challenge in, in, in the past, but uh, with OTA and Sayana's Quebec, project um i think you know it, it will be very interesting piedmont has quickly become uh a partner ex-china partner of choice right so they're pursuing ganfeng like strategy where they've gone from a junior to actually a strategic right the iron ridge and Sayana views piedmont as you know a partner in strategic and they're doing offtake deals so it's been a, a very significant transformation focused exclusively on spodumene focused exclusively on hydroxide um, you know, and uh, 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 Piedmont has plans for, you know, potentially 60,000 plus tons of, you know, lithium hydroxide production, you know, in, in North Carolina, um, you know, as well as in Quebec. So when, when you think about those numbers, and then you think about, uh, you know, Lithium Americas and Ioneer, which are 20 to 30,000 tons, you um, you know, Piedmont actually is very, very significant. So the, the strategic value or the strategic necessity of any one project in America, I think is, is not essential. Lithium is irreplaceable, but, you know, no project is, um, is absolutely critical. So I think that should just be borne in mind. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I wish the people at Lithium Americas, you know, and Ioneer the best of luck with, you know, various lawsuits and, and battles that they're having, um, you know, in Ioneer's case over a rare flower, um, which I think is a, a less uh, significant problem, you know, than the, the multiple um, considerations at, you know, Lithium Americas from a indigenous people point of view, cultural water, just every day that there uh, are signs of resistance at Lithium America, Thacker Pass. Uh, I'm not going to you know, belabor the point again. Wish them the best of luck. They're a former client of mine, the former investment of mine. Ioneer um, has actually made, they announced an, uh, a deal with Echo Pro, which uh, uh, I think is, is meaningful. And uh, it's just important to, uh, as, as a reminder for Ioneer, what they have achieved from a, making you know, high purity, low impurity lithium carbonate. They've made you know, battery grade hydroxide. If you look at the scoreboard, there's a lot of green here. Um, and uh, actually, uh, not only for the month, but three months. On balance, it's been you know, a continued you know, very good year, uh, although selectively there have been stocks that um, have performed less well. And, and there are companies that you know, reached very significant highs that, um, yeah, we talked about this in the Lithium Higher Love, so I won't belabor that point. But on balance, Lithium prices are going up 
and uh, commodity equities follow commodity prices in time. The Chinese companies in particular, you know, Ganfeng, um, they, they've rallied very significantly, as has Tangxi. They're very often leading indicators. But if you just think about Stellantis just had an EV day that followed uh, Ford, which had a capital markets day that followed VW, which had a power day and that followed Tesla, which had a battery day. And then SK Innovation, they had a story day. So SK Innovation uh, announced very significant plans uh, for their uh, rollout. They, they have a thousand gigawatt hours, so one terawatt hours of demand, but they only have something like 45 gigawatt hours of capacity, but they expect that to grow um, very significantly by 2023, 2025, and um, 2030 to uh, supply this very large order book. And that large order book are very significantly of, you know, high nickel chemistries. I think they said in their um, battery day that, uh, you know, 94%, you know, nickel and all of those require hydroxide. So all of the other companies I mentioned, Stellantis, VW, they're talking about mixed chemistries. There's going to be some LFP carbonate depends on the applications, um, you know, for, uh, you know, low range, um, you know, short distance, you know, city cars, but on balance, Ex China, uh, the the market for hydroxide. These are big batteries. Stellantis, you know, the big muscle cars, big trucks. Um, I'll put up a, a graphic of of some of the numbers that we're talking about in terms of battery pack size. The demand is massive, and the demand for hydroxide in particular is uh, is very strong. So we were calling RK Equity. Rodney was calling for. Uh, 2020, last year, uh, he was talking earlier than most that we would have a recovery. He's been right. He's also been talking about a very you know significant premium for hydroxide to carbonate. You know that started starting to happen. We now the latest data is that there's a, a $3,500 premium. You know for hydroxide. You know ex China, uh, we think that that is is likely. I think we both carbonate and hydroxide likely to rise, but it's possible that the gap may may widen, you know, between hydroxide and and carbonate, and therefore companies localized supply in North America and Europe for that hydroxide demand from Western OEMs is, in our opinion, where you know you want to be, and uh, we we we'd encourage you to watch, you know, the, the recent. Interview we did with Piedmont Lithium, and also at, we had a presentation Quebec Spodgman Rocks, where um, Eric Zonsherb of uh, Critical Elements presented, as well as Chris Evans of uh, Winsome Resources, a, a company, a newly um, a company that will will be newly public in the next couple of months. And with that, I think. Uh, Two other things, one or two other things that I'll, I'll just mention are, are capital raises. Um, I, I didn't actually update my chart of all the capital raises, but Livent raised 250 million this quarter, finally. Um, and then Ganfang also raised six or 650 million. And Ganfang, we've talked about, has made significant uh, investments. We'll see what happens with Bacanora, but they're into Firefinch. And uh, so MA and financing uh, very, it continues to be strong. And, and I expect. Uh, you know, IGO um, consummated their transaction with Tangxi. So welcome Peter Bradford and company to the lithium industry. We're excited to, to have you and, and uh, look forward to seeing um, that supply come on stream.